Hey folks, welcome aboard. Great show for you today. Toward the end of the show, meatloaf that's Kaufman One. Of course, Abby's in the kitchen. She always does this so well. I salivate as I even talk about it. Does fungus cause depression? I'm going to make the argument in the opening segment of today's show that it really might, okay? And then Kim Bright, remember her? Bright Core Nutrition. Uh, Kim Bright started a company 25 years ago that was Sweet Wheat. Well, she's been off of Know the Cause for seven or eight years here. She and her family, it's a family-run business, have been furthering the company, building new products, building a new company totally. Kim is going to join me and teach us a little bit about chlorophyll, antifungal, and her sweet wheat. All that and more today on Know the Cause. Today's show is brought to you by Brightcore, your foundation for health and beauty. For the past 45 years, I have dedicated my life and my whole career to finding the root cause of disease. And I now know with certainty that we must play a role in our own health care. I'm a self-care advocate, and you know what? Every time you change your diet for the better, exercise, or swallow a nutritional supplement, so are you. Now welcome to Know the Cause. When Ruth and I were first married in 1980, and before we had children, we used to jog. There was an old railroad uh, track in Manhattan Beach, California. We used to get up in the morning and jog a few miles on that. And we passed a, a girl named Mary. We knew her mother. And Mary was walking and depressed and not feeling good, and she always shared that with us. So I suggested she try a couple of supplements, change her diet, and so forth. A month later, we're jogging, Mary was jogging. And I'll never forget Ruth and I saying, wow, Mary said, I don't know what that diet is, I don't know what those supplements were, but my depression has been lifted, thank you. Folks, I wanna teach you this. Depression is such a problem anymore. We have reason to be depressed in the world past couple of years, but don't let it get the best of you. Know that sometime there's a fungus linked to your stress, to your depression, to your anxiety. What causes depression? Of course, here is the answer you will hear throughout America. The exact cause of depression is unknown, but take this medication or take these three medications. That's where we've gone in America. Okay, yet common yeast and fungi make neurotoxic byproducts and we call them mycotoxins. We are commonly exposed to these via alcohol consumption, some grain consumption, and even through antibiotics. Millions of military and college kids are being placed on these selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors for depression. Are they inhaling mold in their military housing or in their dorms? You can almost make book on it. They are, folks. And inhaling this mold, no professor would know this. No doctor knows this, although it's pretty well documented by a few doctors. Living in a moldy environment increases the risk of neurotoxicity throughout your body, including your brain. Certainly fungus can't cause depression. Wait, do you think it could? Look at this, the Journal of Antimicrobial Chemotherapy 20 years ago said this, researchers tested five commonly used antidepressants called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors against four fungal and yeast species. You know where I'm going with this, right? They're testing these antidepressants to see if they kill mold. I can't even pronounce some of these, Prozac, Cirozat, Zoloft, Paroxetine, and Endronax were tested against three species of Aspergillus fungus and one species of Candida yeast. Prozac and Zoloft were the most active antifungal antidepressants. All tests were in vitro, that means outside the body in a test tube, and all selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors didn't stop fungus, that would be called fungostatin. Uh, they were fungicidal, they killed the fungus in the test tube. Yet these are antidepressants, killing fungus. Okay, let's go a step further. I really want you to understand this. I bring this study up to you for this reason. I don't promote SSRI drugs, but rather to help you better understand that certain fungi, like the antibiotics you took when you were little, or the al alcohol you now take, are neurotoxic and can impede normal brain function. Fungi thrive on sugar. And that means bread, pasta, cereal, etc. And as such, the proper diet can have antifungal properties. That's what I do for a living. Many safe supplements 
also have antifungal properties. So you might talk to your doctor about a changed lifestyle in hopes of reducing your depression. That's what Mary did. This was 40 years ago. I have no idea why Mary decided to trust me walking up the railroad tracks. We seem like nice people. I said, this is what I do for a living. Maybe this will help. Mary is one of many, many, many people in the past 40 years that I have worked with. The results, folks, they come to see you for skin itches. And you know that atopic dermatitis sometimes has a fungal basis. So you tell them, change your diet and maybe take caprylic acid from a health food store. And not only this clears up, but this and this. Change is in the wind, folks. We're running from doctor to doctor to doctor. Where is that calmness? Okay. <clears throat> the study concluded, it is probable that antifungal activity results from an interaction of these antidepressants and the fungal transporter system. Okay, that's their conclusion. Here's my conclusion. Symptoms and diseases that respond favorably to antifungal drugs do so because they're caused by fungus. Is that too far-fetched? This one's going to boggle your mind. Brown University, a 2007 study involved almost 6,000 adults. I quote it. We thought that once we statistically accounted for factors that could clearly contribute to depression, you know, things like employment status, crowding, etc., we would see any link to depression fungus vanish, said Shanisa, the doctor, uh, lead author of the study and associate professor in the Department of Community Health at Brown University. But the opposite was true. We found a solid association between depression and living in a damp, moldy home. May I get an amen? Folks, there's no shortage of psychologists and psychiatrists. There's a huge shortage. There might be one or two who understand fungus. You're going on an antidepressant drug. And that might be a good thing for a period of time to stabilize you. But think, folks, when did the depression start? Oh, that's right. I moved into a moldy home. Oh, that's right. I took four rounds of antibiotics. Could those have initiated a mold growth in your body that selective serotonin inhibitors being antidepressant drugs and also antifungal drugs helped get you better for a short period of time four to six hours as long as you take that talk to your doctor about the possibility that your diet and certain supplements might really help you get better i hope that helps Oh, friends, I always love it when Kim Bright is here. I haven't seen her in a few years. She's gone off. You remember Sweet Wheat? Her company, Brightcore, used to have Sweet Wheat. 25 years later, Sweet Wheat. And now a whole bunch of other products. Uh, thank you for being here with us today. Thank That's you great. for sponsoring Know you. the Cause. And it's great to see you yeah. again. I want to talk about something when we picked you and your son up at the hotel. We were driving back. And you almost fell out of the car excited about grandkids. Oh, We're there now. My heart, my heart, <laughs> my sunshine. <laughs> Isn't it? I mean, it, yes. it's, a, it's a whole new world with grandkids. Do the grandkids get to hear about or consume sweet wheat? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> because <laughs> grandma says. Say. You're, uh, yeah, grandma says. And dad says, dad was brought up on it. My son was brought up on sweet wheat. You know, yeah. I can't believe how big Aaron got. <laughs> I remember Aaron. A little boy. <laughs> now he's a big man. Yeah. Um, Tell me about children. Tell me about men and women. Tell me about the use of real wheat. But most importantly, can we start with how this is different from what we think a lot of us are taking wheatgrass, and maybe it's not. Well, if you go in and you buy wheatgrass, you have to make sure that you're getting organic and you want wheatgrass juice, because that's what we are. We're wheatgrass juice. We are not wheatgrass. Wheatgrass is when they go out in the fields, they cut the grass, and then they dehydrate it at high temperatures, it loses its enzymes, and, and then they chop it up and, and put it in a powder. And we're not cows with four stomachs, Doug. Yeah. At least last time I looked. Right. But uh, you we're know, we're eating cellulose. We're eat, it's all cellulose, and it has a, just a little bit of minerals and vitamins and the amino acids. But with ours, you're getting the juice, the pure juice, which means pure amino acids, pure minerals, pure vitamins. It's got 103 different elements in it. So it has everything you need on it 
on a daily basis. People can fast with this. I fasted for 14 days. Mm -hmm. I've had people go on hikes in the Appalachians and they don't take anything but water and sweet wheat because it, it's a powerful um, chlorophyll rich and chlorophyll is that captured sun's energy. So that's going to give that to us as well. It's antimicrobial. I yes, mean, antifungal, so, antimicrobial, right. antibacteria <laughs> is awesome. And that makes all the difference. So many people watching this show right now know about mold, mildew, and fungus, right? 23 years I've been talking about that here. This product can help to energize you in addition to having a second duty. And that's to kind of clean up some of the debris. I wish someone could take a picture of sweet wheat as opposed to other wheat grass. Oh, wait. You well, have that picture. <laughs> you have, somebody's already done that. <laughs> Explain this, Kim, if you would. All right. Well, the top picture is was the leading wheatgrass product out there. That was our competitor. And so I had a gentleman who was a very famous Carillion photographer take these. And he took a picture of their product and a picture of sweet wheat, which is the one on the bottom. You can see the difference, the vast difference. <clears throat> one looks like there's not a lot of energy there. And the other one looks like an exploding star full of vibrant health. Mm. Are doctors recommending, I, I know two that are <laughs> recommending, <laughs> it's about time we start concentrating on the pH of our bodies. Yes. We know that in an acid environment, folks went 6, 5.8, 5.5 or worse, many of you, that's where we get sick. We get a lot of flus, and lots of colds, and lots of disease. What you want to try and do is get your pH up to 7, 7, 1, 7, 2, somewhere like that. That's where a product like sweet wheat, I'm pointing to the wheat grass that I just brought uh, in here today, but this is the real product. That's the right? real thing, and that is 7.2, 7.3. It's going to take you right back there. What are people telling you? How long? You know, some people swallow two, three capsules. Some people take powder. How long does it take to begin affecting It's different them? with different people. And, yes, doctors are using it. I've had chiropractors use it, doctors medical doctors, they're using it because they know what the pH is. Potential for hydrogen, that's what pH stands for. For people that don't know what that is, it's potential for hydrogen. And that is what the balancer is in our body. I've always been about balance. You know that about mm -hmm. me, Doug. Mm -hmm. And so this is to balance our bodies. We want balance because then our bodies function as God intended and we're happier. You know, it's interesting, Kim, as I sit here and talk to you, older and wiser, we both are, <laughs> but your story is stable. You were saying that 25 years ago. You were one of the first guests on, then it was called Your Health with Doug yeah. Kaufman, but you were one of the first guests. You were beating this drum 25 years ago. Yeah. You've now made Brightcore a bigger company. You're the founding, uh, founder of Brightcore. It's got a lot of products that we'll talk about in future shows, but folks, I encourage you to go to sweetktc.com and learn more about this product and their many products. Kim and I are going to be right back with more. It's so good to be communicating with you again. Uh, she's taken some time off. Kim is my friend for many years. Taken some time off to further develop Brightcore, her company. The flagship product was Sweet Wheat. It's still here. It's still her, probably her biggest seller, but boy, do you have some great products. We're going to tell you how to get a free product in just a few minutes. My cat got sick. Three vets said it was going to die. We started putting chlorophyll in the cat's water. Mm -hmm. We changed the cat's diet to more of our diet, and voila, the cat, yeah. six years later, is alive and well. What is this chlorophyll, and how does it... Uh, how does it fit with a product like yours, Sweet Well, wheat? so simple. I mean, it, you see that vibrant green color that mm -hmm. our product is there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it is the captured sun's energy is chlorophyll. And it almost matches exactly molecular, um, the hemoglobin in our body. Right. And so... Um, they call it green blood. They call right, it green right? blood. Yeah, That's right. Is. It's the green bl uh, blood of the plants. And we are an antifungal. So it's an antifungal, antibacterial. And it has helped so many people with toe fungus and candida and women's issues. And um, it's, it's incredible how much it's helped with those. Kim. Because it's balancing out the pH. And I just, I really want to, I really want to push that. The chlorophyll and everything that is in the sweet wheat 
it brings it back down to that pH balancing, and it takes away that acidosis. Yeah. And things like fungus don't grow. You know, you have a collagen product that you've developed. I'm excited to hear about that. You yeah. folks can inquire about that. But in the day, a decade ago, there were lots of people watch my show who would mix a little sweet wheat powder and use it on, you know, blemishes on their skin. I was blown away. Well, by do you some remember, <laughs> Doug, that I made a paste? I came on and I made a paste and I put it on your face. Do you remember yeah. that when we were doing live TV? Uh -huh. And it and it makes your feel your skin feel like a baby's skin afterwards. It's so nourishing and cleansing. But do you remember we were on live TV and I took some of this under my tongue? Yep. And we were live, and I had to say goodbye. And this green powder, bye. Puff the magic it dragon. <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> Women with vaginal yeast problems, men with dermal problems and yeast and mold and mildew problems. Uh, taking this orally for an extended period of time, I would think because those diseases tend to grow in pH problem, you know, more acid environments, mm -hmm. I would think that this would help with skin problems and tummy problems and so forth. It helps across the boards. I had a gal that worked for me and uh, she had gums that were in such bad condition they were going from 8 to 10, and that's mm. when your teeth start to fall out. And she had orange teeth. She's a smoker, chain wow. smoker, and drank tea nonstop. If you remember, when I came on your show one time, I had forgotten my toothpaste. Yes. And so I yes. saw antibacterial sitting there, and I grabbed some, put it on my toothbrush, and brushed my teeth. I told her about it. She started using it. She didn't have to have gum surgery, which she had scheduled three months out. She, her bad breath went away. She woke up in the morning, no smoker's breath. Her, her whole digestive tract started changing and uh, her skin changed, got more beautiful and vibrant. It happens so quickly for many people. Those with a pH down around five uh, find out, gosh, two or three days? You know, you keep looking at the label. Could this be two or three days? Mm -hmm. Folks, it should be, you hydrate. Kim is a teacher of all of this. She says you gotta drink more water. Why not take a scoop or two of the sweet wheat powder, or a few capsules, swallow them down while you're hydrating every day? Yeah, well the first and most important thing of course is prayer. The next thing is our breathing, our oxygen levels in our body. Mm -hmm. Hydrate with water. You can't move those toxins out in the nutrients to where they need to go without it. And then nutrition. And here's the nutrition. Here's it, your base. Let me tell you one of the reasons I love this company. Uh, I'll put it on graphically here for you to see. Either the capsules or the powder. Buy two bottles, get one free. There's the telephone number. We'll give that to you again at the end of the show. But uh, this kind of blows me away. Thank you. We all need cholecalciferol. This is yes. vitamin D3, right? All you got to do is pick up the phone and call Kim. 1-888-380-8229. And they'll just give you, because you watch today's show, They'll give you a bottle of D3. You can't get a better deal than that. But more importantly, folks, if in a couple of months you're not totally happy with their products, send it back. Kim will send you your money back. Yes. What kind of a guarantee, what company has a guarantee like that except one that assures you what's on the label is in the product and they're great products. Great to see you again. Kim. It's great to see Thanks you too, Doug. Thank you. you bet. Hi, my name is Abby and today in my kitchen I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy meatloaf. This is all Kaufman approved so there's no bread or grain or anything like that in this meatloaf. What you're going to start with is I've got about a pound and a half of lean, or actually it's just ground beef. I use the 80-20 because I like a little bit more fat, it gives a little bit more moisture. You can use a leaner ground if you want but this is what I prefer. Next for my binder I'm going to start with chopped up cabbage and carrots. Now this is just a basic coleslaw mix that I bought from the store, so it's already chopped up in a bag ready to go. There's nothing on it. And I just gave it a quick little chop a little bit more so it's a little bit smaller pieces, but that's it. Then I've got a little bit of chopped onion. It's just white onion. Nothing to it. I'm using garlic salt. It's just straight garlic and salt. There's nothing else added into it. If you don't have that, you can use salt and garlic powder also and then one egg. And 
and then we're just going to go in and mix everything up. Now one trick for working with any sort of meat, especially ground meat or ground beef, is that you want to try and let the meat come to room temperature before you start working with it, and especially before you start cooking it, because it will cook better. You don't want to start off with really cold meat into like a hot oven or a hot pan. You want to have as close to room temperature as possible. And you're just going to keep mixing that around until everything's nice and smushed up. This is nice. Everything's mixed in, it's ready to go. I've got my nice little pan here. I do make sure when you're using a baking pan, you use one with a little bit of a lip. Because this is a fattier meat, you're gonna get a lot of juicy runoff, and it's gotta go somewhere, so you wanna make sure it stays in the pan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw this in. And then I'm just gonna shape it into a classic loaf for a meatloaf. Now it is gonna cook down a little bit, but not too much. So you don't wanna make sure it's too close to the edges or anything like that. But it's just in your classic loaf shape. Pretty even all the way through. Now I'm gonna go wash my hands, but I am gonna be cooking this at 350 degrees for around 50 minutes or so, or basically until the internal temperature is for beef well done, which is around 170, I believe. Okay, my hands are clean. Now I'm gonna transfer my meatloaf into my oven. All right, I'm back. It's been about 50 minutes later. My meatloaf is out of the oven. I've let it cool off so I can eat it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and slice into it. Now this is just your classic meatloaf. There's nothing, nothing really to it. simple, it's easy to do, it's a nice thing to have for family dinners, for just for yourself, for leftovers throughout the week, it's great. Yeah, it's got a lot of great flavor, you can taste the garlic but it's not overpowering. You get a little bit of crunch from the onions and from the, the cabbage and carrots but again it's not too much, it doesn't taste like you're eating a salad with some meat on it. It's really good. It holds together really well. It's a nice classic, classic dinner. It's easy to make. Make this recipe yourself. Leave me a comment on Facebook. Let me know how you like it and have a great day. See, I'm still drooling a bit from Abby's meatloaf. Amazing the way she cooks, okay? Thank you so much, Kim, for coming in, reacquainting yourself with me and my audiences of many, many years. Bright Core Nutrition Sweet Wheat, here's the deal. First of all, if it doesn't work for you, you feel in two months, send it back and get your money back. No company makes a deal like that. Second of all, buy two bottles and get one free. There's the phone number, jot it down. I'll leave that on for a second. Third of all, you know that you get a bottle, a 90 count of vitamin D3 free. You don't have to order sweet wheat, right? I'd love it if you did, but just by watching today's show, they'll send you a 90 count of vitamin D3, cholecalciferol, very important. Does fungus cause depression? You've seen it, now you decide. God bless, bye-bye.